Greetings, Ksenia Evgenevna. What should be done in situation if you are a warrior and you are not going to forgive the damage once caused to you, even though it happened a long time ago, but you haven't let it go, thus reserved the right to respond to your discretion and your choice? How can one prove to himself and to reality that the offender will be held accountable for his actions? How to execute one's right to punish the offender if the contact with him has ceased a long time ago? Can methods of occult influence such as damages, curses, diversions of currents and similar be used in this case? It's a long question, and probably not an idle one, because the matter of revenge is probably the cornerstone of our entire culture. In pagan culture, for sure, the question of revenge was a sacred one. Nobody had the right to do harm and get away from revenge, if we are, of course, talking about someone with dignity, honor, with a warrior spirit. The Christian tradition recommends that we do the opposite. Forgiving the offenders and not taking matters to personal vengeance so that the offender could not be affected by retributive life circumstances or by your actions. Christianity has a slightly different paradigm. In Christianity, it is believed that only God has the right to punish and pardon, so man, of course, should not encroach on God. God punishes and pardons according to his own laws and by his own algorithms, good and evil, holiness or sinfulness. Whereas if a man picks up a weapon and begins to punish his offender, he does not operate according to Christian cults, but rather by remembering his own pagan nature. Because in paganism, vengeance is considered to be good, precisely this type of behavior is seen as good. This, of course, is why from a Christian point of view, such behavior is not blessed at all. The colleague has formulated his question correctly. I feel like a warrior, which means I don't feel like a slave who gives a master the right to punish and pardon my offender. I was wronged as a property, and therefore my owner was offended as well. This is the paradigm. Whereas in this case, a pagan, and especially a pagan warrior, would adhere to the principle that revenge must take place. But what is the right way to organize your revenge? A witchy way, the way of a sorcerer will, of course, imply an influence in the form of damage. What is the peculiarity of such influence? Well, the point is that the person striking back, taking his revenge in terms of compensating for his own insult, must be ready that he will not witness the result. If, for instance, there's no contact, like the colleague described. As you won't follow your offender around counting how many times he stumbled in a day and how many times he sneezed while attributing all this merit to yourself. That is, here one needs to have a certain mindset. Avenge and forget, avenge, and do not control this process. This is when vengeance fully takes place. But a state of inner satisfaction must be present. There must be some type of relief. You can observe it by your own life achievements. If you've been wronged and you forgave, or didn't retaliate, and you realize that everything in your life has started to slowly but steadily get worse. This means that the damage was done in such a way to lower your rights compared to your initial status. 
But if revenge took place, if revenge was taken following the law, according to the algorithms of your God, because every God has his own idea of what is good and evil, if this revenge took place according to these algorithms, then your existentiality, your resilience, will begin to level out. What else is important in this case? The right to revenge must be executed if a person feels free. But it will only happen if there is an inner conviction that you do not need to control this process or spend more of your lifetime making sure that everything went well. If you need to know about it, you will find out in a very fancy way and rather quickly, if everything was done right. Now, regarding the actual right to revenge, the insult must truly have caused some damage. A damage to honor, damage to dignity, damage to one's financial or social standing. What is damage? It is something that lowers your status, brings you to a lower caste level. To the level of merchants, to the level of labourers or slaves. That is, the damage is obvious. Insults and deception are considered to be of a similar nature. Although everything will be much more effective if you strengthen your defense before you strike. After all, for some reason the damage has reached its addressee. It means that your protection was fragile. At some point you opened yourself up. Maybe you placed too much trust or gave a reason to be treated so unwittingly. It doesn't deny your right to revenge, but first of all, one should think about closing such energetical gaps. Or as it was said, who wants the loveliest for himself, first above everything, would be wise to have weapons about him. That is, if you raise the bar of your current level to the point you consider appropriate, be so kind and take care of your weapons and protection, of strengthening your own position. Then this type of revenge is likely to be more effective and appropriate. You can only hurt someone who is capable of being offended. You can offend someone who understands what world he lives in and has no illusions about people around him. Maybe you've established a wrong level of communication with environment. Maybe you've become close with someone who shouldn't be even nearby and you haven't paid attention to the signs around you when this happened. Any loss, any defeat, is the reason for a change. If all goes well, as a rule, there is no need to strive for perfection, engage in your own growth and expansion. The latter is necessary for more active defense, because the bigger you become, the more space there must be for your physical, emotional, mental environment for your mind to exist. This is one of the properties of the high existential volume, since it is characterized not by the volume itself, but rather by the effect it creates during its manifestation in this world. Therefore, this is such a multi-dimensional story. Thank you, Olga. You've asked a very good question.